Welcome back to week three of our course, Boltzmann Law, Physics to Computing. This is the fourth lecture for this week. Now, this week we started by defining this transition matrix and showing how you could get the stationary probability distribution from that matrix. And then we spend the next two lectures talking about this sampling technique and writing down the transition matrix and discussing why certain updating sequences work, whereas the simultaneous updating doesn't work if the nodes are connected. So what we'll do in this lecture is we'll talk about a different kind of network, you see, which is different from the Boltzmann networks that we have been talking about. And in this network, the connections are one way. You see, Boltzmann networks are always reciprocal. That is the examples we used. The weight matrix was always symmetric. If there's a W12, there's a W21, and they're equal. See? And that means that when you write down the synaptic functions, that when you write down what is X1 tilde that determines the next state of new neuron 1, you find that it involves the bias, but then there's an influence from the spin 2, the two-second neuron. And when you look at what determines the state of neuron 2, it is affected by the state of neuron 1. And this, eff and this effect from 2 to 1 and 1 to 2 are exactly equal. Now that's the nature of Boltzmann networks. But what we'll talk about in this lecture is what we call this Bayesian networks, where it is directed. So W12 is 0, but W21 is non-zero. Okay. And such networks are actually quite widely used because I think in the context of learning I had mentioned that usually directed networks are much easier to train than Boltzmann networks. And in general, such networks are widely used, although we are not talking about it much in this course. And this course is, has largely been about Boltzmann networks. But in this lecture, I'd like to say a few words about this type of network and the differences it makes. So first thing, point about these networks is, now there is no Boltzmann formula. You see, this whole Boltzmann approach is that there is an energy function. But if it is not reciprocal, if the connection is not symmetric, then there is no Boltzmann formula. There is no energy function. And because there's no Boltzmann formula, it means, you see, we had these three methods that we had talked about, the Boltzmann method, sampling method, and this W matrix, and the transition matrix method that we introduced this week. Point is, now we don't have the Boltzmann to compare to. <clears throat> now, as we'll see, the sampling method and the W matrix method, they work, they still agree very well. That is, the transition matrix method does give a very good description of how the sampling is method works. That's fine. But there is no Boltzmann to compare to. Now, the first point we'd like to make is, as we go, go along, is that I guess there is no Boltzmann formula, but then if you use the sampling method or the transition matrix method, they both give the same answer. But the answer is different depending on the sequence of updating. You see, with Boltzmann networks, we said it doesn't matter which way you update. It could be one and then two, or it could be two and then one. But now the answers will be different. And the and how do, what do we compare these answers to? Well, we don't have Boltzmann to compare to. So which answer do we prefer? Well, there is a Bayes theorem that allows you to predict the probabilities for directed networks. And the answer that you get will match Bayes theorem if you update it in the order of parent to child. You see, in the Bayesian networks, you can identify parent nodes who are not influenced by anything and the child nodes who are influenced by their parents. And the point is, 
that the correct way of sampling, if you are, if you want results that will agree with Bayes' theorem, which of course Bayes' theorem generally describes phenomena in the real world very well, so you want to agree with Bayes' theorem, and for that the updating order should be first parent then child. Now, so let's talk about these points one by one. So first point is, why is there no energy function for non-reciprocal networks? Well, if you write down the energy function, like say with two neurons, you'll get a set of terms looking like this. And you'll notice how W12 and W21 are kind of part of the same term. Now, if you now calculate this synaptic functions, you know, the x1 tilde that determines the state of neuron 1, or x2 tilde which determines the state of neuron 2. The way you are supposed to do it is by taking the derivative of the energy function with respect to s1 or s2. And the point is, you'll find that the coefficient you get here is exactly the same as the coefficient you get here. Namely, the way x1 is affected by s2 is exactly the same as the way x2 is affected by S1. But in a Bayesian network, what we are really trying to do is keep this one non-zero while getting rid of that one. So the influence goes one way. And the point is, if you just go from an energy function, you get the same factor in both places. And this is not really an accident. It's kind of inevitable if you are starting from an energy function. Why is that? Because if you look at the derivative of x1 with respect to s2, whatever you get, you see in this case is the same as the derivative of x2 with respect to s1. And the reason it's inevitable is because, you see, the way you are getting x1 is from the derivative of e with respect to s1. So basically this quantity is like the second derivative of e with respect to s1 and s2. And the same for this quantity. This is also the second derivative of E. It's just that the derivatives are taken in, in a different order. Here it's first one, then two, or first two, then one. But for all normal functions, those two things would be the same. And so usually it would be very it would be impossible to start from an energy function and get a directed network out of it. You see? And once you, if you don't have an energy function, you don't have a Boltzmann formula either. So what you have to do is forget about energy, but just start from a synaptic equation and say that, well, x1 tilde is equal to the bias term times the time plus a weight term. And the weight term acts only one way. There is something from s1 that influences 2, but nothing from 2 that influences 1. So get rid of that term. And then you can apply the sampling method or the W transition matrix method to the problem. And you could do with the W matrix method, you could again emulate both, both update orders. It could be one and then two and two and then one because you just take the product of the matrices just like we were doing before. But these matrices, there would be a little bit of a difference. You see, how do we write these matrices? If you remember, in the last couple of lectures, we came up with this expression for W1 and W2. Now in W1, you, it involved these two types of Fermi functions, one that involved X1 and the other that involves X1 plus W12. That's the Fermi function we wrote with a tilde. Now what happens is W12 is zero. And so F1 and F1 tilde are much the same thing. They both depend only on x1. So that's all. We use the same expression, just change that. When you write w2, again we had an f2 and an f2 tilde. And again, the f2 tilde involved the interaction. But this interaction we keep because we only drop the w12. The w21 is still non-zero. It's still there. We keep it. So we can use much the same expressions as before. It's just that. You drop the w12, but you keep the w21. And when you do that, if you do this problem, so I'm showing a problem that's Bayesian in the sense that you have a w21, but no w12. And for comparison, I'm showing you what you get. 
when you are reciprocal, like Boltzmann. It's both W12 is equal to W21. So that's the Boltzmann one. This is the Bayesian one. And you can see the response has changed. It is, looks different. And in either case, the sampling method and the W matrix method, they agree. So the W matrix method describes this sampling procedure for all kinds of networks very well. Now, if you update one, then two, that's this one. If you update two and then one, then it's this one. Again, first thing to note is both methods agree, the blue and the yellow. Second thing to note is that when you look at the top row, which corresponds to the Boltzmann network, the two update methods are in agreement. But when you look at the lower row, where it's Bayesian network, the two update methods give rise to different distributions. So what you see here and what you see here are different. See, and that is the point I was trying to make. This is this unusual thing, or what is at least different from Boltzmann networks, is that when it's a directed network, then the update sequence matters as far as the sampling is concerned. But which one is more correct? Well, here we have a problem because as I said, the sampling, the W matrix method is just a more formal or analytical way of understanding the sampling method. So that itself, and they both agree in either case. So from this, you can't really tell which is more correct. With Boltzmann networks, of course, we always compare to Boltzmann result, but for Bayesian networks, we don't have a Boltzmann result. Right? We don't have a Boltzmann law to compare to. But we have this, the fact that they are different and question is which, which one is correct. We, what we have is this Bayes theorem that will allow us to understand this. So the Bayes theorem though says that again in a Bayesian network you have a parent node and a child node. And the way you should do it is you should, you should first write down the parent distribution because that doesn't depend on anybody else and then use Bayes' theorem to write the overall probabilities. Now, this will get clearer once I, once we I explain, uh, we, once we look at a simple example. So, in this case, for example, what it says is that if I want to know what is the probability that the parent is zero, so the answer is, well, that's the probability of 0, 0 plus 0, 1. Because first node is parent, second node is child. And I want to know what is the probability the parent is 0. Well, answer is it will be 1 minus F1, where F1 is this X1. That's the, that's the I guess, the term that determines the state of the parent. And State of the parent doesn't depend on anything else because it's a parent node, not the child node. And in this case, again, if you just add it up, the answer should be one minus F1, F1 being the Fermi function corresponding to X1. What about the possibility the parent is one? Well, that's the probability of one zero plus one one, and that's equal to F1. So that's this first step. But the question is, I'd like to know the individually all four of these. How do we do that? So that's where the way you do it is, supposing I want to know probability of 0, 0. Okay. We first take the probability that the parent is 0. That's what you, and then multiply it by the probability the child is 0, given that the parent is 0. This is basically the Bayes theorem that we are talking about. So how do you fill it up? Well probability the parent is 0, well, that's 1 minus F1. And what is the probability that the uh, that this child is 0, given that the parent is 0? Okay, so given that the parent is 0 means S1 equal to 0. So then the X2 tilde is just X2. And so the state of the child is then determined by this Fermi function, the one with just X2 no W21 in it. And so 
probability the child is 0 is 1 minus f2. So overall p0, 0 is 1 minus f2 times 1 minus f1. Now if you want 0, 1, that means parent is 0, child is 1. Okay, parent is 0, that's 1 minus f1. Child is 1, given that the parent is 0, well, that's f2. Okay, and you're done. Now if you want to write p1, 0, parent is 1, child is 0. So parent is 1, the probability is f1 that we discussed. Now what is the probability the child is 0 given that the parent is 1? Well, now because the parent is 1, what controls the state of the child is x2 tilde, which is x2 plus w21, because you see s1 is equal to 1 now. So it's a now a different Fermi function, one that corresponds to x2 plus w21. But this tilde Fermi function is then what I should use here for p10, right? So you'll have f1 times 1 minus this, uh, this tilde f2. And if you want p11, it would be f1 times the tilde f2. So those then would be the probabilities of the four different possibilities. See? So the basic procedure, remember, parent you can write right away, and then you have to find the child using these conditional probabilities. Okay? So that's the Bayes theorem. Now if you compare what you get from sampling and from W matrix method with Bayes theorem. You see, we don't have Boltzmann to compare to, but we have Bayes theorem to compare to. And if you do that, what you'll find in this problem very clearly is when you update from parent to child, they match beautifully. When you update from child to parent, see, the sampling and the W matrix agree, as we had discussed, but the Bayes theorem is off. It's not agreeing with what you're getting. Okay. So this is the basic point we want to get across here, that when it comes to directed networks, the order of update indeed matters. And when you do things parent to child, they work very well. When you do child to parent, it doesn't agree with this conditional theorem for conditional probabilities. And that kind of, I guess, sums up what I wanted to talk about in this context. This W matrix, you see, it's a very nice method that we have introduced in this, in this week. And what we just did was we talked about different types of sampling procedures for Boltzmann networks and Bayesian networks. And in the last lecture, we'll talk about another great utility of this transition matrix method. That is, it gives you a very different way of thinking of things, a physical picture that gives you a nice conceptual bridge into quantum computing, which is what we'd be doing in the last two weeks of this course. Thank you.